One of our most commonly requested tutorial videos is how to connect a TC Helicon device in Logic as an insert to post-process vocal effects. It's quite a complicated procedure and it can have a lot of little gotchas in there. So today, I'm gonna to show you how to do it. Using a TC Helicon device as an insert requires a special set of circumstances. You must be using an external interface of some sort. So in my case, I have this PreSonus Fire Studio board with 16 inputs and 16 outputs, and that's my recording interface. I then want to have my voice live play seen by the system and able to be used as an insert. In order to do that, I need to create an aggregate audio device in the audio MIDI setup in the Mac. That will join all of the inputs and outputs of the PreSonus board and the voice live play so that I can see it all within Logic and make it work out. Let's take that step now. First I open Audio MIDI Setup, and it's gonna pop up a box on the screen. First thing I wanna do is go down to this little arrow at the bottom of the left hand corner of the box here, and click on Create Aggregate Device when I click on the plus there. So it pops up a new window. Now, one important step is that the order in which you add your devices to the aggregate device is the order that the inputs and outputs will be in the full aggregate list, which means if I click on my PreSonus Fire Studio first, it will populate the first 16 inputs and outputs as that PreSonus Fire Studio. Then when I add the voice live play, they will become input and output 17 and 18, and so on and so on. So it does pay to really keep track of which devices you have in which slots for input and output, because it can get quite confusing quite quickly. So I'm gonna click on PreSonus Fire Studio first here. Then I'm gonna add the voice live play. And then for my purposes, I need to add Soundflower, but that's for how we record out of this into our uh, tutorial here. So now I've got my aggregate device. I also want to check and make sure that both the speaker and the microphone icons are next to the aggregate device. If they're not, go down to the bottom here to this little cog wheel and click on use this device for sound input and repeat it again for use this device for sound output. Now we have an aggregate device that contains all of the inputs and outputs of my voice live play and my fire studio and my additional outputs that I need here. The next step, which is for some reason a key one and I don't know why, is reboot your computer. It really doesn't like to take your aggregate device and work with it right away. Always chuck it a reboot just to make sure that everything sort of takes. Our next step is to open up a Logic project, which I've done, and I've imported a dry vocal track that Georgia Murray left with us when she did our last tutorial. So I've just got that single track there, and I wanna make sure I go up into Preferences, and I go to Audio, and then I make sure that Aggregate Device is selected as my audio device. It may have defaulted to something else if you were using something before you created your aggregate device, so make sure that that's actually selected in there, and then you're gonna to wanna to click Apply Changes. I've already applied them, so I'm not gonna do that in this tutorial, but you're gonna to need to do that to change to the aggregate device. Once that's done, you should be able to hear your audio. Don't shut up, don't shut up, shut up. And what I've done is I've chosen to hear my audio back through my PreSonus board so I can listen through my monitors here. When I finish doing that, so we'll just make sure we get over here, we'll check that. Okay, it's all working. Here's the next step, which is really the key. What we wanna have happen is the audio to come from Logic, go through the voice live play to be processed, and then out to my main outputs. So, we go down to inserts here, and you'll notice I have a bus set up. That's just for my own particular recording setup here so I can hear things. In your case, you probably won't have anything lit up there, so don't worry about that bus. We wanna click on inserts. So you press and hold with your mouse button, and you go all the way down to utility. And at the bottom, at utility here, there's a selection called IO. I'm gonna go over to that, and I'm gonna select mono to stereo, and then let my mouse go. It pops up a new window here, which I'll explain in one second. But first, I have to explain something about the voice live play. The reason that we select mono to stereo is that it's going to send this mono vocal track into the voice live play, but we want to receive stereo back because you may be processing a stereo effect like a reverb or a delay um, or a harmony with a pan or something like that. The other setup thing you need to do on the voice live play itself is to hit the setup key, go to the input screen and select input USB left. What that will do is feed that mono signal via USB into your voice live play. 
it will then behave exactly as it does when a microphone comes into it. So you do need to adjust the level to make sure that it's not peaking out. And that may uh, entail actually turning up and down the fader within your uh, recording software, within Logic, to make sure that you're just not clipping anywhere and you're getting good level to the box. Okay, that was a little bit of an aside, but let's get back to our little box that popped up here and freaks us all out. So there's an output and an input, and this is kind of interesting because it, it, it sort of seems backwards. The output is first and the input is second, but it does make sense from the perspective of logic. As this insert happens, where are we going to go out of logic from, and what are we going to come back in to logic from? So we're going to go output. Now, I remember I said to keep track of which your aggregate device inputs and outputs are. For me, I know that my left USB input on my Voice Live Play is number 17 on my list here. That's why I put my Voice Live Play second in the list after my PreSonus 16 channels. So I'll select that, output 17. Yours may be different, so just make sure you've kept track. On input here, I will select 17 and 18 for my input, which is the stereo return via USB from my Voice Live Play. Now I've got my insert set up, which means that the next time that I press play, the audio will go through my Voice Live Play and back to Logic, and I will hear the process signal. So I've knocked down the output to my insert by 3 dB, just to make sure I'm not peeking out my USB device. So let's take a look here and see what happens. Don't shut up, don't shut up, shut up. Good, so now I'm residing in the green and a little bit into the yellow, which is a perfect amount of signal to feed to the device. Really, after that, it's up to you what you do with it. I can, in real time, manipulate these effects. So let's go in here. We've got a soft hall here. Let's put on a big, obvious triplet delay here. So here we go, playback. Don't shut up, don't cool. shut up, shut up. Let's try another one. Don't shut up, there we go. Shut up, shut up. So you can hear how you can process things like that. And there's another little trick for you. If you head into the setup menu and go to lead mute, you can turn lead mute on or off, which means that if you want the dry track to come into the Voice Live Play to create, say, a harmony, but you want that harmony on a separate track that you can mix later on, you would turn lead mute on and do all of your processing passes with lead mute on. And that's gonna make sure that all you get back is the effect. You just get back the delay, you just get back the harmony voice, and that's a really effective way to do your mix. I'll show you how to do that in another project that I've created where I have about 10 tracks of George's voice all set up. All right, so what this represents on screen here is George's dry vocal after several passes through the Voice Live Play that I've recorded back to different tracks. I didn't record the dry vocal in place with the effects on it. I made a new track and set up sends to go to those new tracks so that I could preserve the dry vocal and put all the effects on things. What I find easiest to do is actually record the effect all the way through the passage that you're going to use it in, even if you're going to use it sometimes within that passage. It's easier to use automation on the actual faders themselves within Logic, rather than trying to turn on and off buttons sort of in real time live while you're doing things. So let's take a look here. I've got multiple harmonies, which is one of the most effective things you can do through the Voice Live Play. I've actually, for this case, used the internal EQs and compressions and echoes and delays and things because they're just as easy to use as a plugin as they would be to do a full pass via the Voice Live Play. Where it really shines is in the harmonies. So I turned lead mute on, sent the dry vocal out to the box, and received the tracks back. I also messed around and I edited up some things like did some stutter delays and that kind of thing that you can't actually do in the play. So I used the play effect and then manipulated it again after the fact. So that can be really fun to mess around with as well. Let's take a listen to how it sounds. Cool, so you can see a bunch of different effects are going on there. Let's take a look at the screen. I'm gonna go into the uh, automation mode here, and you can see this whole gong show going on 
of all of the automation that I've got happening here. So I've got things coming and going. I've actually gone in and manipulated the level of her voice. If a word was too quiet or too loud, I've gone in and manipulated that. So you can really mess around after the fact. And this is much more getting into the, the mixing stage. And that's something that you can practice and read all about and see tons of YouTube tutorials about that kind of thing. But now we've gotten to that point where we've used things as an insert. We've successfully done a whole bunch of tracks and it sounds great. The one thing that you haven't seen, obviously, that we've cut out is I've had to reboot probably 10 times during the process of making this video. It can be incredibly frustrating to use an aggregate device with logic. It, I have no idea where the idiosyncrasies come from, but they're there and they are frustrating. If this were my project in my studio and I had a client sitting over my shoulder, I would likely just use a single interface and I would go analog through these devices. That way there's no aggregate going on. But you asked for how to do an insert. I've shown you how to do an insert and it really does sound amazing when you can get it to work. So there's a little bit of a tutorial for you and we hope that it helps you get at least nine tenths of the way there to being successful with these aggregate devices. Don't shut up, don't shut up, shut up, don't shut up.